But those who are worshiping with us uh, uh, virtually as well. And so our opening prayer today is actually going to be shared with us by Terry White. Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Homecoming Season 6, Coming Out of Exile. Please prepare yourself for prayer by clearing your minds, clear your hearts and spirits and focus fully on the Holy One. Thank you, Holy One, for waking us up today to enjoy another one of your glorious, blessed days. As we gather in this season of homecoming, let us be reminded of how our ancestors sang with gladness for Jacob and gave praise to you, asking for forgiveness as they gathered from various places. Just like back then, we are all your children, regardless of our status in life. We are all returning home, weeping, praising, and asking you to lead us in a straight path to keep us from stumbling and to bless and to forgive us. As you, Holy One, welcome us with open arms, just as Jacob did his firstborn Ephraim. We shall praise and exalt your name as you welcome us. 
your children to come home. Please keep us covered as we find our way, for we know the journey is not over. These things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's rise and sing together. There's a call of bones ringing on the restless wings and the lights and the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. A blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let it break in these like the world forevermore. The Macedonian call today, send the light, send the light. And the golden offering at the cross we lay, send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let the rain in peace like the world forevermore. Let's pray and praise me everywhere. Send the light, send the light. And the Christ like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Shine from shore to shore, send the light and let it spread in peace like the world forevermore. The first reading is a poem coming out of the closet by Joanne Law. I've been hiding in a dark place, so dark, the place of closet bearing shame's name. Has been my prison and hiding place. It's trapped me like a winding maze. The darkness is thick and tangible. The shame is painfully palpable. The darkness of shame is like a fog, a fog that clouds a gloomy fog. One day I heard God's voice <laughs> calling me. Why are they trapped when I set you free? Now, open the closet. Do not fear. There's no need to fear. Prior, right here. I pushed open the door of shame, took one step forward, and I came out. I glanced back at what had held me captive. I'd been given a new life to live. Look, but do not return to your past. I've given you freedom that will last forever and for eternity. Your shame I vanquished on the tree. The freedom felt too good to be true. Is this true? I didn't have a clue. Am I really free? How could this be? My heart was filled with uncertainty. Take my hand now. I'll show you the way. His kind voice compelled me to obey. He guided me with steps to follow. He told me to look through the window. I peered through the window. In the room, I saw beautiful flowers in blue. The garden had a beauty so rare. Are you ready now to set it with you? My yearning eyes gazed at the fountain, right in the center of the garden. Despite my longing, I felt great fear. There's no need to fear, for I am here now. I've never left this room. I'm afraid, so afraid of getting hurt, I said. You've been hurt deeply. Now that is true. Look at my hands that were pierced for you. My hands are not standing to you. Hold them and let's start things anew. My nail scarred hands will hear, feel those memories. In my arms, you'll find strength and safety. Does anyone who has talked to the young and the young at heart? about exile. 
In a minute, Miss Kathy is going to read another reading, something written by the ancient prophet Jeremiah. It's about people who have to live in exile. What do you think exile means? And I'm going to let you know right now, for those who answer, I have something special to give you. What does exile mean to you? Yes. You're kicked out of your home. You're kicked out of your home. Thank you, Dean. Lots of love to you. What else does it mean? Exile. You're taken away from everyone that you love and everything you love. Taken away from who you love and everything you love. Love on you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other ideas about what exile means? Not welcome. Not welcome. Thank you, Joe. You are loved, you are beautiful, and you are important. Isolated. Isolated. Very good, Terry. <laughs> Love for you, Terry. Thank you. I'm going to put it right here in your honor, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Well, all those were very good answers. Exile is about being forced to live away from the place you call home. And it often includes the people that you love. Exile is not just something that happened a long time ago, or just to those people that the prophet Jeremiah wrote about. There are some people today who live right around us that are living in exile. They have been forced to leave, they have been forced to leave where they live or choose to leave because it is not safe for them. If you ever have, if you ever feel that way, I hope that you will tell me or another adult I do consider myself a <laughs> that you trust. You are not alone if you feel like you are living in exile. And God will help you know that this is a promise given to you by God. To have some specific examples of places or people that may not live right around us that are experiencing exile right now, I hope that you'll take a minute and find out where Syria is, or Afghanistan, or Haiti, or Central America. There are people there who do not feel safe living in their home anymore and they want to come live with us what do you think we should do for them rather than just nod off during the rest of the service today i was actually going to put out crayons and i forgot encourage you to make notes while you listen or participate in the rest of what's going on in the worship <coughs> gathering today. But now, let's take time to listen to what God has to say about people in exile. The second reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 7 through 9. For thus says the Lord, Sing out loud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest points of the earth. Among them, 
the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will lead them, walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is an important day for us. In this past week, the movement that we are part of, Metropolitan Community Church is celebrating its 53rd anniversary. <laughs> and I believe one could legitimately say that we are a church that was founded to welcome exiles. Tomorrow is National Coming Out Day. The day that was founded in 1988 here in the U.S. A day set aside to support LGBTQIA people in coming out of the closet to claim who they are. A day many of us can identify with. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we continue to observe our homecoming season, I think we feel it's important for us to acknowledge these things as we gather as community. Because coming out and exile are not just things that happened in ancient times or 1968 or 1988, which I know some people do think is ancient times. And these ideas of coming out in exile are not just political or social issues to be addressed. Our purpose is to look at them from a spiritual perspective and to respond accordingly. First, I want to acknowledge that coming out of exile has a personal aspect to it. Now, I don't know where any of you are with your coming out process, but I believe God created each of us uniquely and has called us good and that Jesus encourages us to live life fully. And God celebrates with us when we do so with authenticity. So this gathering, on some level, ought to be about celebrating the fact that we have or that we are in the process of coming out of the exile that some of us have been placed in. in. So, from a personal spiritual perspective, I want to encourage you. Be you and be it proudly. The second aspect of this idea of coming out of exile is, is that it is not just personal. The way of Jesus encourages not all, us not only to be authentic ourselves, but to encourage and support others to do the same. It's not enough to know we're blessed and to find safe community for ourselves. We are called to actively oppose rhetoric, systems, and structures 
that tell people they are less than they are. Martin Luther King Jr. commented once, no one is free until we all are free. And I believe that to be the spiritually collective perspective that we ought to take. Everyone has a right to live in a place that they feel safe. And we are called to be that place for some people, create that space for those who do not feel that they have a home to belong to. The third aspect of coming out of exile that I want to point out today is that it is not just about sexuality and gender. There's still lots of work to do in that area. Don't get me wrong. But there are millions of people still hiding from who they have been created to be or placed in situations that they are not safe if they do simply acknowledge who they are for all kinds of reasons. Those of us who have experienced the blessing of coming out have something to share with them. Our experience that we can help inspire them with so that they too will have the courage to do the coming out of exile process. Our exile may not be caused by the exact same issues as anyone else, but we are receivers of the good news and have a light because of our collective spiritual perspective on coming out of exile that we can share with whoever feels they might be exiled. And that light can help them lead them to liberation as well. And it ought to bring us joy to be able to do so. So today, I want to encourage each of us to take the prophecy of Jeremiah and the words of the poem that we had shared this morning to heart and to action. Sing aloud with gladness in this place. Isn't this a wonderful place to have come out of exile to? Sing aloud with gladness for our ancient ancestors and for MCC and all those who have come out of exile. But also pray. The words attributed to God, I'm, I'm sorry, the words attributed to Jeremiah in that reading when Jeremiah said, Save, O Lord your people, the remnants of our community, and the world. Who is it that you know that needs to be encouraged to come out of exile? And let us work. Work to ensure that anybody Everybody that is seeking a safe place to live has a safe path to achieve it. I pray this day that you and I will become the prophets that are needed here and now that everyone realizes they no longer have to be in it and come out. Amen.
We ask that you would bless them, consecrate these elements that we have, just as you did those elements long ago. Allow them to become for each of us and all who gather around a table like ours, just what we need them to be. Transform them and us now as we share in this holy meal. May we become the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The meal is prepared. Let's share the feast. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. 
Thank you for choosing to gather with the Mother Day to worship today. In addition to worship, a Mother Day gathers and ministers in a variety of ways. Here are a few highlights. The Living Your Strength study that was originally scheduled for October will now be offered in November. Please contact Terry Wade for information about the book you will need to participate in the advanced homework. A Mother Day is doing the Halloween raffle. Dean, do you have any more information? Sure do, Chuck. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> ah, should I come up front so I can be on the camera? Yes. I love being on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It's almost like we planned this, which we did not. Uh, <laughs> but um, so uh, the raffle, we're, we uh, just like we did before. We this is a Halloween theme, but uh, we have over a, uh, it's a Halloween goodie basket with over one hundred dollars worth of uh, scratch off lottery tickets. You can buy a chance for five dollars or get five chances for twenty dollars. Uh, you can either send a check to the church and I'll write your name on the tickets. You don't, you don't have to write things. I can do it. I can do it. I'm going to say I can. Lost my sticker. Um, or you can Venmo at Dean Beckett. You'll see a lovely picture of me and my beautiful husband. Um, and that way you'll know it's really me. Uh, and you can send the money that way and I'll put your name on the tickets. And the drawing will be held on the 24th of October. So you have it in time for Halloween. You can also... When you see the post on Facebook and stuff like that, share it with your friends. Share with your friends. Tell your friends about it. Send it to your friends in an instant message. Get people to buy tickets. Thank you. <laughs> Our North by Northwest 242 group will meet this Monday at 6.30 for socialization and 7 o'clock for discussion. If you live west of the Blue Route and north of Highway 1, please consider being part of this fellowship, discussion, and prayer. Contact Pastor Dexter for more information. Drumming for Healing is scheduled for Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Rose Tree Park. If you would like to be blessed by making a joyful noise, you are welcome to join in. No experience required. And an ask of me to share with those gathered how Mother Day has made a difference in my life. Well, I was vaccinated back in May, and uh, I con contracted the COVID virus a couple weeks back, and uh, was in isolation. And I got phone calls uh, and cards from people wishing me well, along with prayers from a mother day. And now I'm free and clear. The Department of Health cleared me. And my doctor cleared me. The Department of Health and my doctor both cleared me. So uh, I'm free and clear, and that feels really good. Uh, our offertory, there's a, ma many ways for you to give in the offertory. Facebook, on the computer, and you can mail in a check if you want to. And this is the time when people are starting to come back to church more like in October and November. So just keep the church in your thoughts and prayers. One of the things we're going to be working on is painting Bookter Hall here. And as you know, paint doesn't come for free. So that's, you know, an expense that we'll have to incur, but keep within budget at the same time as we're juggling the paint, painting of the uh, of our building here. And uh, that's all I got. Thanks, let me share. Joanne for the new singer's hands. Keep us safe and cool. Cool. And if you guys could rise, did you wear your ball? Start song here. <laughs> No 
Bye. 
Thank you.